Hello, welcome to this quick start about our psychrometric diagram viewer in version 3. In brief, we will introduce the user interface and see what actions can be taken in this program. Actions? Well, we will show two examples where we will heat, cool, dehumidify, mix air quantities, draw, and so much more. Let's go to the program. You opened the program, so this means you were able to register yourself as a user. Let's discover the functionalities of the Psychrometric Diagram Viewer uh, in this quick start. You will be able to download a well-documented manual from the About. What we have to set first will be uh, our preferences. In these preferences you will find three tabs. There is the Units tab, the Diagrams tab and the Parts tab. In the Units tab, obviously, you will be able to choose what uh, kind of units you want to use in the program. Either the SI units or the uh, Imperial units that you uh, are used to work with. The Diagrams tab is um, giving you the possibility to either use the psychrometric diagram that we see now in the background or to move to the Mollier chart that we find here. Obviously, the view is completely different. Allow me to stick to the uh, psychrometric diagram for the continuation of this quick start. Another important aspect in this diagrams tab is the density calculation. So we will use uh, the standard value of 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter uh, in this exercise. Uh, this means that if we would leave point A uh, with a certain action to go to point B and then the uh, reverse action from point B to point A, we would actually end up in the same starting point. Yeah. There is more about that standard value if you click on this question mark here. Uh, obviously also in the manual there is more information about this. Um, you could prefer to use the calculated value and there every time we will use the density of the starting point of a certain action. Now, in the continuation here, we will use the standard value of 1.2 kg per cubic meter. The third tab, the paths, gives you um, a possibility here to uh, set the path of whereabout you are going to save either your project file or your report file uh, for the exercise that you're doing. Not such a bad idea to set that path. Let's start to work with points. If I want to specify a point P1, I have here two possibilities to set conditions for this point. So I can choose between dry bulb, absolute humidity, relative humidity, enthalpy, wet bulb temperature, specific volume, moist, or moist air density. So all of these conditions can help to specify my point P1. Let me take a dry bulb temperature of 24 a degree centigrade and a an relative humidity of 50%. I want to treat about 400 cubic meters uh, per hour of this air. So I can click on add. When clicking on add I see three things that happen. First of all, my point is indicated in my chart. I get the point P1 in my chart. I get a blue label uh, that indicate me what kind of conditions help me to specify the point P1 and I'm getting the point data. So, so much information is coming in that point data. I see for instance the pressure at sea level would be 101 uh, kilopascal or 1013 hectopascal or millibar, uh, all the same. Uh, this is the pressure at uh, sea level. Okay, having specified that point P1, I can also specify an action uh, for that P1. Now, the simple action, just to show point, uh, when I click on add here, uh, it will give me some dotted lines here on my psychrometric diagram to clearly uh, indicate uh, the position of it uh, and um, the details will be given in the point data. 
Okay, by the way, if I don't like that blue color uh, of that point P1, the point is now selected. I can edit this point, uh, click on the small color square here to give it, for instance, red, and simply accept this. And again, acknowledge my change and click on the accept button. Yeah. So this is now my uh, point P1. Having said this, what I can uh, do is to uh, consider a certain amount of fresh air that I would like to add into the room. So there too, I could specify a second point P2 at a condition of, for instance, minus 10 in winter and a relative humidity of 80 percent and give it an amount of 50% of the extract uh, that I would take from that room. So instead of 400, I put 200 here and I can click on add as well. So here I'm getting my point P2 being specified. Now what of course I would be interested in is to know where about the mixed condition of these two air volumes would be. So as a next action, I could uh, ask here from the pull down to see the mixed air condition between point P1 and point P2. Now obviously, um, when I click add here, I will draw that line and somewhere on that line my mixed air condition will be the condition in point PP1. I see that it has a dry bulb temperature of only 11.7 degrees centigrade. So this is a condition that would be far too cold to introduce uh, into my room. My room, by the way, I would need a room condition that I didn't specify yet. And let me uh, specify this to a, a temperature of 22 degrees uh, with a relative humidity of 50% and I will need of course to enter 600 cubic meters uh, per hour now because this would be the sum of my return air and my fresh air. So if I add this I'm getting the point P3 in my diagram now. What is now definitely required is to have a heating action between the point PP1 and my um, desired room condition P3. So in there I see, or in that action, I see that I could either use steam or water to humidify that air. And indeed, when we would apply sensible heat to that mixed point PP1, we see the more we go to the right, the more uh, we will uh, cross curves of relative humidity and the more we get out of the comfort zone for that air. So what we will need to do is to add moisture. And this could be either steam or water. When I click on add, uh, I see that when I use steam, uh, I would only have the sensible uh, movement to PP3. And then there would be no change in dry bulb condition uh, when I use steam to reach the point P3. Uh, checking that action here, I would need a total capacity of 3 kilowatt, out of which 2.09 kilowatt would be sensible, and that's about 70% sensible heat, and only 910 uh, watts of uh, latent heat. That latent heat would be translated, of course, by the uh, by adding actually that steam humidification at a rate of 1.3 kilograms per hour. If I would edit this action, so it's still highlighted, I can edit it. I see that I uh, could uh, change from steam instead of steam, use water, and there, uh, okay, it com becomes completely different because there we would see when I accept this here that uh, we would use a um, total heat still of three kilowatt, out of which uh, 2.09 would be. Um, sensible and the same 910 kilowatt but we see that in reality we would have to heat with 3.01 kilowatt because part of that heat will be used to evaporate that water to reach point p3 you see that we are following here the lines of constant enthalpy so we will evaporate that water and we will reach point p3 
That evaporation again, uh, or the amount of moisture that we need, will still be the 1.3 kilograms per hour uh, that we will have to add. Okay, I continue the exercise by uh, adding a condition in summer, for instance, where I did specify the condition for the point P4, P4, and by the way, you see there is an elevator bar here now, that condition P4 uh, was 30.4 uh, degrees centigrade, dry bulb, and 70% relative humidity. Again, I would take about uh, half the amount of air that I take away from the room in fresh air, so 200 cubic meters uh, of fresh air, uh, as opposed to the 400 that we had in uh, point P1, the 400 cubic meters per hour. Okay, so this is my um, uh, outside condition. Obviously, I can have an action mixed there, uh, uh, where I end up actually in the point PP3. Now again, PP3, if we look to the dry bulb temperatures, 26.1 degrees, about 60% relative humidity. Uh, this is again too warm to be introduced into the room, so we will need cooling. So to add cooling is no problem. We can uh, take from the action uh, here, we can take the uh, cooling and giving cooling capacity from what? Well, easily from point PP3, the mixed condition, to uh, the condition um, that I uh, need to reach for my room is the P3. P3 is the condition, my desired room condition. Add. Now, we see that we have a fair deal that we need a fair deal of latent capacity, also a fair deal of uh, a sensible capacity. So in all, in total, we see here in the pull down for the actions that I will need 3.03 .03 kilowatt uh, total capacity, out of which uh, 840 watts is um, sensible capacity and about 2.1 uh, kilowatt is latent capacity. Um, the relation sensible versus total, okay, I have about 28% of uh, sensible capacity. Okay, but that cooling, it's all not that simple. But to continue that exercise, let's throw away a couple of uh, points that we no longer need or that would only confuse us. Okay, so let's simplify that drawing slightly. So we said it was not all that simple to go from PP3 to P3 and what is really happening is that we will need to cool that mixing point to uh, a condition uh, where we will reach the saturation line. So this we will be able to cool with a sensible heat factor, let's say about 75% and we will go from the point PP3 uh, to um, find our cooling uh, on the saturation line. That is what's happening when I add this point. So my um, desired room condition, P3, it has a condition that has an absolute humidity of 8.2 grams per kilogram. So I need to specify a new point, P5, that will have the same amount of absolute humidity and that will have 100% uh, relative humidity. This means that it will lay on that saturation line. Yeah. So here, absolute humidity 8.2, 100% relative humidity, and the amount of air will be, of course, the amount of air behind that mixing condition, so 600. I have to condensate between the point PP5, that's my next action, towards the point P5, and I give this a green color, so when I add here, we have this green line uh, pointing towards P5. What I can do now is to add heat, sensible heat, to get to the condition P3. So what I still would have to do now is to add another action, another action where we will heat. We will heat uh, between the point P5 and the point P3. Um, I'll give that a red color. Okay, and when I add this, we see that it is a pure 
horizontal line, a eh, fully horizontal line um, to P3, so only sensible heat is given. And this is what we also will see in the label. Hmm? We have a total capacity of 2.23 kilowatt, out of which 2.23 are sensible and nothing is uh, latent heat. Okay, this is how I specify uh, this uh, cooling from PP3, my mixing condition, to my room desired condition. Now, what we can also show here now is uh, a function to uh, see everything much better uh, because if we uh, want we can zoom in to the diagram simply with the wheel mouse eh? we can um, scroll up and down or left and right eh, with shift holding the shift button and again using with control you can zoom additionally to uh, nicely position uh, all of your action or the totality of your actions uh, on the uh, relevant part of the psychrometric diagram uh, that we have here. So besides this there are uh, some more actions that we can show for instance the action for dehumidification and dehumidification I could take an example here it's uh, irrelevant here in this but I could take an example to dehumidify 0 0.5 kilograms per hour eh? uh, and I can put this in brown for instance yeah uh, when I confirm this and add you see that I would have a dehumidification so uh, simply uh, following also the same as if we had the uh, humidification with water we have a dehumidification desiccant drying chemical uh, dehumidification if you want uh, and we follow the line of constant uh, enthalpy another possible action would be uh, to connect uh, points uh, and here I could connect for instance the point PP3 PP3 to connect that point to point P5, it's irrelevant here now, but just for the sake of showing that you can simply draw lines uh, in between points, okay, let's put it in orange and add that uh, connecting line uh, to our um, psychrometric chart. Obviously we can also make a report in the program and this will be a rich text format report where we will see both the graph as uh, all of the different points that we made and the actions with of course the results of what an action involves will be uh, in the report uh, as well. So this kind of concludes this uh, quick start. Uh, I wish you uh, a lot of success in the use of the program and I thank you very much for your attention.